Here's the screencast I promised. With reference to the diagram, there really is only one thing that you need to configure if you're using external power. And I'll show you shortly how to connect it up. Bisco Micro, of course, connects at this end. USB power externally driven at this end. The thing that needs to be configured is the clock enable. By default, we'll use the clock on the board, but it can be set to use the waveform generator, the Bitscope, instead. So looking at one here, here's the micro snap with a header pin. You want to connect it to this pair here. You can see it's at the left-hand edge of the clock module. Now, if you then get external power and plug it in here, you'll see that the power lead has come on and the board is configured ready to go. So back again. Here we have the micro Pisco micro snap powered and running. So we'll get the Bitsco micro and connect it like so. So you can see the two are connected and running. Now we'll power up DSO. And you can see sawtooth waveform. Just tap down the time base a bit so you can see it. That's what will happen normally. And it sort of happens by default, but it might not appear that way. What you really need to do as the other part of the configuration is to choose whether the ramp is to count up, count down, or count up and down. So again, with reference to the option pins at the top here, you can connect it to this one to get up counting. You see nothing's changed on the DSO screen. Alternatively, I can connect this one and now it will count down. And the third thing I can do is I can connect it to the middle one, which will cause it to count up and down. You notice the frequency of the waveform seems to be changing a bit. That's because my finger's been touching the clock. So as I move my finger around here, it changes the frequency of the clock. The other option on this top header is for the filter. So if we, let's just say we set it to be a up count, and then we get another header to enable the filter. So I put, oops, put the filter header pin on. You can see the waveform is now a filtered sawtooth. Or if I connect it in the middle, a filtered triangle wave. Filter off. Filter on. With the system set up as I had just described, I'll now show you the mixed signal data that is produced by the microsnap board by default when connected to Bitscope Micro. Uh, if I connect this diagram here, this is a screenshot produced by Breadboard One, which was the original prototype of this board. Uh, you can see the triangle wave that we had previously displayed. Um, you've then got the one, two, three, four bits of the counter. Least significant bit, most significant bit. You've got the clock signal here, and you've got the Schmidt trigger uh, output here. The top two traces are the switching positions from the analog A and B channels. So they're of interest for a different part of the description. And of course, the green analog trace here is the comparator um, and Schmidt trigger. So when the counter rises to a particular point, the comparator flips and we start counting down until it flips the other way. That's the feedback triangle mode. So if I go back to showing, here's the diagram, let's power up the DSO software. And we can now see the triangle wave. So this is just the default settings for DSO when it's first powered on. If I then go into mixed mode, uh, slow the time base a little bit. We can see a, a 
signal pattern that looks very similar to the one from the original breadboard one board. Here it is. I'll enable channel B so now we can see the comparator signal. Now there's a couple of things that I need to point out with the board that you have, which is a prototype. If you look at the signals here, you can see they don't quite look the same and the counters least significant, most significant. They're swapped around. That was due to a tracking error on the PCB. So the uh, least significant bit is actually the brown trace channel L1. L0 is the next uh, next significant bit, then the next significant bit, and the most significant bit. And the clock appears on the green channel, not the yellow one. There isn't anything connected on the yellow one. Perhaps to make it simpler, I can set it to uh, counting up only, and you'll be able to see this more clearly. Okay, so there's the least significant bit. Here's the next most significant, the next most significant, and the most significant bit. So that's something you might need to explain to people when using this. As you can see, because the uh, comparator output is not connected to feedback to the up-down input on the counter, it remains uh, high until the very last count, which it momentarily drops low. So that gives you the main set of signals that you can see with uh, the MicroSnap board 2. The other signals here, the purple and the blue, as I mentioned earlier, are the comparator outputs on the level trigger for channel A and channel B. If I were to move that around, you'll be able to see how they change. So you can see I'm changing the trigger level up and down. And as I do, the switching point changes. Now, there are a number of other configuration options available. I won't go through them all, but I'll point out one that might be of interest if you want to have a bit more of a play with the clock. As I described originally, um, let me just see if I can get this to start. Okay. Um, we currently are using the onboard clock. You can see when I put my finger around it, I can change the frequency of the oscillator. If I remove this uh, header from here, I'm effectively going to turn the clock off. And so suddenly we have no signal. Instead of using the onboard clock to drive the circuit, I can instead connect the L4 waveform generator pin to the clock of the print of the board. Like so, you can see which one that is there. In doing this, I can then use the DSO driven Bitscope micro waveform generator to drive the clock. So now I can go across to the waveform generator and set it to a step is probably the most convenient, useful one to do. And you can see that I now have the traces on again, but it's much slower frequency because the default clock speed on the uh, board itself is much higher than four kilohertz. So let's just ramp it up a little bit. So you can see as I change it, I might want to change it to, let's say, 20 kilohertz or 40 kilohertz. Um, and you can see as I change this, the frequency changes. So now I'm driving the entire mixed signal board, not from the built-in clock, but from the waveform generator of Bitscope Micro itself. And for a last little bit of trickiness, which I'll explain to you, in the event that you don't have or don't want to use an external power supply to power the board, as we've done here, you can actually use Bitscope Micro by using the waveform generator to power the board instead of an external power source. So to demonstrate how that works, firstly, we'll remove external power and it stops working. You can see the clock still uh, flipping up and down because, of course, the Bitscope Micro waveform generator is still being generated. We have two configuration options to change here. The first one is this one up here, which at the moment is connecting the waveform generator output of Bitscope Micro to the clock. Instead, what we want to do is connect the power from the waveform generator so the waveform generator output is now being con connected to the power of the 
uh, snap board. Now, it's not evident that that's what's actually happening here. So you actually have to turn it into a power source. The best way to do that is put it in a square wave, set the symmetry up to 100%. So it's a DC voltage at whatever the maximum is, which in this case is 3.3 volts. And you can see that it's now being powered because the lead here is illuminated. The next thing you need to do is to configure it to use the onboard clock because of course we're using the Biscope's waveform generator to power the board. We can't clock it from there as well. So for that, we connect this header here. So the two connections to work in this way. So now we've got the board running, as you can see on the DSO software on the left, but it's being powered by Biscope Micro. This header here has enabled the onboard clock. This header here, which is three pins along, has applied the waveform generator output of the Biscope Micro to the power supply of the snap board. One thing you might have noticed is that the amplitude of the signals in the analog area have dropped because previously the board was powered at 5 volts, now it's being powered at 3.3 volts. And that there gives you the ability to demonstrate this on a stand or something without the need for external power. But in general, when explaining how the circuit works, I'd recommend you run it from the external power from the USB. You don't even need a Biscope Micro connected to the board to run the board. You can actually then connect and pull off signals uh, using the connector wires to the Biscope instead of connecting it to the end if you want to look at other signals that are made available that way. So just as a final wrap, the explanation of the circuit is actually in a blog on our website. This is the relevant part of the URL, uh, which talks about breadboard one. So the snap two board implements that function. So there's the counter, four bits, the D to A converter, the filter, the Schmidt trigger that feeds into the up down counter optionally. I'll send you the schematics shortly so you can actually see the precise circuit of it, but that's the block diagram of it.